Watch this. This guy totally gets it. I love this. I feel exactly the same way that he does. I don't think that he really has a clue of what we do. Uh, because when you put something in a blue box, it gets there. And when I started working here, I seen the miracles behind these walls right here. When you put something in a blue box, it gets there, which looks like magic. It's not magic. It's because of all the hard work that happens behind those walls by people like him. That man's name is Mike Bates. He has been a U.S. postal worker for nearly 30 years. God bless him. And what he's talking about there is the mail. When he says he has witnessed miracles on the job. Did you catch what he said first, though? He said right at the top, I don't think he really has a clue about what we do. The he in that sentence is this man, Louis DeJoy. He is the head of the U.S. Postal Service, the Postmaster General appointed by Donald Trump. He is still in that job today, believe it or not. It was, of course, Louis DeJoy, pardon me for saying so, who kind of broke the U.S. mail system last year. Immediately after Trump installed him in the job, DeJoy instituted draconian new policies that created unprecedented, devastating backlogs in the mail across the whole country. He ordered multi-million dollar, irreplaceable, custom-built mail sorting machines to be removed and destroyed. He cut the number of trips that mail carriers were allowed to take. He banned mail carriers from taking extra trips to deliver mail that would otherwise be late. And so, yeah, the mail got late, really late, all over the country at his orders. And I know you know all of this because we have all been living through what, it is, what has felt like a collapse of reliable mail service in this country, which started when Trump's guy, Louis DeJoy, took over. Unfathomably, even after that disastrous start to his tenure as Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy is still in charge of the Postal Service tonight as I sit here. And since he's still there, he's still coming up with new ways to try to monkey wrench the way that mail gets delivered even further. He's recently proposed his own 10-year plan for the Postal Service, something The Washington Post calls the, quote, largest rollback of consumer mail services in a generation. Just as one example, DeJoy's plan calls for ending the use of airplanes to move first-class mail across the country to only use trucks instead, which, of course, would significantly slow down the delivery of the mail. He would further reduce hours at post offices. He wants to close a bunch of post offices, wants to end a lot of postal services. Postal workers and union leaders immediately pointed out that one of the things he's proposing would be to offload more mail-carrying operations to private companies, which is designed to have a side benefit of further slowing down mail deliveries while also privatizing the mail. So that's why that postal worker, Mike Bates, was saying that his boss has no idea what he and his fellow mail carriers do. And you might see those, those sh signs over Mr. Bates' shoulder there. When he made those remarks this week, he, he was at a protest. He was at an informational picket. Postal workers, among them some of the ones who blew the whistle on the sorting machines disaster last year, postal workers held a rally in Des Moines this week in Iowa to protest these proposed new changes to the way the post office operates. They stood outside the Des Moines post office chanting, raise hell, save your mail. They said, they say cut back, we say fight back. They made signs that say things like DeJoy equals delays and stop DeJoy, save USPS. And it wasn't just postal workers who showed up for it. They had a live stream set up where people could explain why it was important to them to keep delivery standards high, because it's the people service, why we all need the mail on home, at, at, on home and on time. This man, for example, is an advocate for retirees in Iowa, for people who rely on the mail being delivered on time to get their medications and household necessities. He called the slowdown of the, of, of the U.S. mail, quote, a threat to the well-being of seniors, and it is. Louis DeJoy is now pushing a 10-year plan to slow the U.S. mail even further, to offer less services, or excuse me, to offer less service and to close post offices all over the country. Uh, right now, though, it's just a proposal. Um, it's actually up to something called the Postal Regulatory Commission, whether or not DeJoy's plan formally gets adopted. Right now is the magic window of time where the general public gets to tell the Postal Regulatory Commission if they should do that. Right now is when the public gets to tell that commission how they feel about Louis DeJoy's plan to cut back and slow down the Postal Service even more than he already has. The public comment period is open right now, but it'll, it's only staying open for the next month. It's only open until June 22nd. 
as Iowa postal workers rallied this week to try to let people know this is happening and to try to get people to public comment against DeJoy's plans to further mess with the post office. The president of the Iowa Postal Workers Union said this. She said, quote, if we don't get DeJoy's plans stopped, the avalanche will begin and irreversible damage may be done. Well, joining us now is Kimberly Carroll, who is the president of the Iowa Postal Workers Union. Ms. Carroll, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time. Well, thank you, Rachel, for inviting me back. And again, another pivotal moment in postal history. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it. Um, and I'm, I'm interested in the fact that you and your colleagues, the people who were out there in Des Moines this week trying to raise awareness of this, trying to get news coverage, trying to let people know that worse and further cuts are coming, are asking for people to give public comment against it. Do you think that strong public comment against this proposal could actually stop it? Well, I don't think we've ever had an opportunity where uh, the public has been able to make comment in, in uh, previous changes. Uh, and that's why we really want to take this opportunity to make sure that the public uh, understands what's happening and they take action. Um, and let the Postal Regulatory Commission know that this is not the direction that we want to take. There isn't one right way or, or one way. We need to find the right way. Um, and if the uh, American people speak out and say that this is not what they want in the Postal Service, that they're not willing to settle for adequate service, they want exceptional service, and they deserve exceptional service, we will find a different way. It seems to me like if there's one thing that you wanted to tell a randomly assembled group of Americans that you could guarantee would make most of them mad would be that you're going to close a bunch of post offices. I think everywhere in the country, including very rural parts of the country, especially very rural parts of the country, the prospect that a local post office that's been there forever is going to get shut down gets people's blood boiling pretty quickly. That proposal, plus the proposal to slow down first class mail, plus the proposal to just stop offering some existing mail services, it, it does seem like this is designed to hit the public's hot buttons here uh, in terms of the kinds of things that would most aggravate us. I wonder if the plan here is to, if the idea here was that Americans wouldn't know this was happening. It just seems like there's such inflammatory proposals. Well, I think that's exactly what the plan was. Um, even in hearings with regard to the service standard changes that were conducted by the Postal Service, they admitted to not talking to customers and they said they hmm. weren't going to get public comment. So I think it, that was part of exactly the plan was to make sure that this went through, that the law got changed and the Postal Service would make all these service standard changes and the, the customer would be just left to complain. Um, we're wanting them to take positive, proactive action and tell them that they're not willing to settle for this slowdown. Um, and if necessary, they need to reach out to their, their congressmen and senators uh, because we as American people should be able to um, influence the service that is being provided to us as Americans. And the only way to do that is if we rally together once again and put pressure on the people who are making decisions for us and say, look, this is what we want. This is what we deserve. And the time to do that is now, before the law is changed, before the rules are changed. Again, that public comment period with the Postal Regulatory Commission closes uh, in a month, closes in June 22nd, which means public comment needs to go in now uh, in order to potentially affect that. Kimberly Carroll, president of the Iowa Postal Workers Union. Kimberly, it is a pleasure and an honor to have you here again. Uh, keep us surprised. Come back soon. Thank you so much, Rachel.